Welcome to the Vintage Ambulance Chronicles. I am your host, Dave McGowan. This channel is for those of us who own, have owned, and are great fans of these great American cars. Um, I would like this channel to be uh, you know, entertaining, educational, covering topics including the history, uh, the manufacturers, the service owners, and personal stories of those of us who worked in these uh, great uh, vehicles as either a first responder, EMT, or paramedic. So I'm also inviting um, the viewers, um, like yourself, to help build this channel by submitting your own vi uh, videos. Um, and then I would like to post them here on this channel. So don't worry, I I'm really not looking for a Hollywood production. Um, you know, please just be yourself and have fun. Um, go for it. And um, at the end here, I'll post a, uh, uh, an email address where you can send your videos to be uploaded. I'll be really excited to, to see what I get. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm going to start uh, doing some videos after this on uh, my particular Cadillac ambulance and um, how I acquired it and what I've done to get it to the condition it's uh, currently now. So um, this first episode is going to be the only one, I promise this, the only one that's going to look like a PowerPoint presentation. My apologies for that. Um, I, I, I guarantee you that the next ones will be uh, all video albeit with a blooper here and there but hey you know what um, we can we can all laugh and and have a good time let's let's put some humor into this so a little bit about myself my background is i'm a 40-year veteran of ems um, you know holding a, a plethora of many clinical positions and then um, typically uh, migrating into uh, management positions where um, i ran a, a large hospital-based ambulance service um, in minneapolis st paul um, today, I'm an EMS consultant for a global organization, and I focus on ambulance safety and uh, fleet operations. Now, back to my early years when I started in EMS, and that was in 1978 as a freshman in college. Uh, I was looking for a part-time job, and uh, while well, uh, in the student union uh, looking at job postings, for some reason, there was a posting that for an ambulance driver, quote, ambulance driver at the time, um, that seemed a lot more exciting than flipping hamburgers or pumping gas. And you know what? It paid better, uh, you know, uh, hourly rate. Mm -hmm. So I ended up applying at Praxel Ambulance, which was owned by Mr. Mel Praxel. And uh, Mel took over the, uh, the ambulance service from a funeral home back in 1962 and uh, grew it was uh, to where it was, well, grew it to a point where it was, in, or I was there in uh, Winona. And um, in some upcoming episodes, I'll, uh, I'll tell you more about the interview that I had with Mel and the, the quote, test I had to take to, to pass to be hired. Um, I will guarantee you, you will get the, quite the chuckle out of it. it uh, I'm sure that, um, you know, all I can guarantee you, I never had an interview or a test quite like that again. And uh, I'm sure many of you may have never had that, but I guarantee you, um, it, you will get quite the chuckle out of it. So this is uh, right here, the, uh, the 1974 Miller Meteor Lifeliner, and it was the first uh, ambulance I, uh, I took my uh, call in. And I can tell you that call was an extremely memorable one. And again, I will definitely share with you in vivid details about this call in an upcoming episode. Hey, along with some other that I'm sure that will be amusing and gut-wrenching. And, and, and I would like to hear your stories too. But uh, do know this, and I would ask this of you, um, please respect those that you care for, I care for, you know, and, and I'm not going to divulge any personal uh, details. Um, let's truly respect the privacy of those that we cared for. Okay, so now back to uh, Mel Praxel. Um, you know, Mel, he was, he was a very colorful person and, um, it, it was, it was quite the personality and, and, and people in town either disliked or adored him, you know, with his, you know, he was, he was a large guy. He was, he was a big guy. Um, he always wore the Dynamed smock, either the blue or the orange one, which of course I did. And a lot of us dinosaurs and EMS remember those. And, um, to me, it always seems he had a cigar in his mouth. I mean, Mel always seemed to have a cigar um the only time he really never puffed on or lit it up is when we had a patient but other than that 
um, he had a cigar in his mouth, and in the front pocket of his Dynamite smock, um, he had a he he kept a good collection of about five of them in that pocket. You know, I really have to have to hand it to Mel, and I, and I appreciated him bringing me into the world of emergency medical services. Um, you know, I've had just the great career. I met wonderful people, um, and if it wasn't for that. I wouldn't have the family that I have now, um, an absolutely you know, wonderful, beautiful wife, and, and a great life that, um, that, I, that I certainly do enjoy. And um, I, I appreciate him, you know, um, you know, extending that offer to me. But uh, again, like I said before, uh, you'll get a chuckle uh, out of that, uh, that interview. Now, in this photo right here, um, I, I wanted to find a picture of Mel, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't have one, so I had to go into the archives of some of the Winona papers, and um, this just seemed about the only one that I could find, and of course, um, uh, you've got to have a kick of the, uh, of the headline of this article. Um, you can uh, see, well, if you look on the far left of the photograph, um, there appears to be a gentleman who appears to be a cross on a sleeve. Well, that's Mel, but uh, closer, uh, closer look, he didn't have a cigar in his mouth. Um, now, one of the things about, um, well, working um, in Winona, and at the time um, I went to EMT school at the Winona Technical School at night while I was taking my college classes, you know, during the day, um, became an EMT. And I got to tell you, I never saw so much cr trauma um, from crashes um, than I did while in Winona. I mean, we had a mainline railroad with two tracks to go through. I mean, um, we would see numerous car versus train um, or people just getting hit. We saw suicide by train all the time. Um, it, it, it just, it just for some reason, um, it was just a magnet for trauma. And literally that town needed a, a level one trauma center at the hospital. But um, when we did have something, most of our trauma patients went to Rochester, um, to St. Mary's Hospital there, um, which today is now uh, part of the, uh, the, the Mayo system. Now back to Mel, you know, I got along well, uh, well with him. Um, you know, um, but that was up until the time that he fell off a ladder trimming a tree at one of his rental houses that uh, I lived at. But hey, you know what? That's a that's another story for again another upcoming in, in episode. And uh, yeah, it all ended uh, well. Hey, you just got to watch it, uh, the video. But you know what? Mel did treat me nicely, and his generosity was was very uh, it, it was very evident. Um, you know, he knew that um, I didn't have a car. You know, while in college, and um, he graciously let me use this Pontiac, which he had just put out of service. Now I think I spent more time polishing that car than driving it. Um, it was just a great car to drive. I know a lot of my roommates loved having it around the the place, and um, it truly was a, a head turner. Although. It was hard to pick up the gals in it. Uh, I, I think that stretcher in the back probably <laughs> scared them off. <laughs> now, the first time um, that I entertained the idea of owning an ambulance, uh, Cadillac, or you know, actually a car-based ambulance, when I was a uh, director at uh, Health East Ambulance in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, I got notified there was a gentleman um, up at our front office, and um, uh, I met him, and he was inquiring if we had any old used ambulance equipment that we wanted to part with. Um, I know we did. We had a room full of just old, obsolete junk, and uh, it'd be great to have some additional room if we got rid of it. So I took him back there, and, um, you know, he looked through all the equipment, and he was like a kid in a candy store asking, oh, can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have that? And I'm like, yeah, you know, you're more than happy to, you know, more than happy to take it with you. Um, but then I asked him, I said, you know, what do you want this for? And um, he told me that he was the owner of several Cadillac ambulances and hearses. Well, um, that certainly piqued my interest. And uh, then he was more than happy to tell me about his collection, um, how he acquired them, and uh, what he was uh, doing with them. Now, this gentleman, um, his name is probably well known to a lot of you in the uh, Professional Car Society and, and friends of uh, the Professional Car Society, and um, Tony Karsnia. And from that day on, Tony and I uh, became very good friends. Now, through our friendship, uh, Tony would often reach out to me, and um, he would always say, hey, Dave, tell me some more stories what it was like, you know, to, uh, to be, you know, an a EMT, you know, in these Cadillacs, and, um, you know, I was more than obliged to do that. And you see, Tony was a funeral director, and, of course, he had really no experience in EMS, 
um, you know, we would uh, always schedule some time and, you know, meet up uh, for lunch. And uh, we would just spend hours, you know, talking and me telling him stories, which I, I can just see that he so enjoyed it. And, you know, he kept telling me over and over again, he says, Dave, you need to get an ambulance. And I certainly disagree. Um, but I told him if I did acquire one, you know, I wanted to be just like the one that I took my first call in. And he completely uh, understood. Now, Tony's, Tony always kept a keen lookout uh, for an ambulance uh, for me, although um, if he did find uh, some, um, and he did, um, it was either in very rough shape um, that needed to have a lot of money put in for restoration or the, uh, the price was uh, way outside my budget. Now, in the fall of 2019, um, I was presenting at a conference in Denver, and at that time, um, I became aware of a Cadillac ambulance that was potentially available in the area. Um, I was uh, made contact uh, with a board member who was part of an EMS educational organization who owned the car, and she started uh, the ball uh, rolling for me. Now, I didn't know much about the car, um, but when I requested she send me photos, um, when she finally did, uh, my excitement level literally went into overdrive. And here's a photo of it. And as you can see, it was a 1974 Cadillac Miller Meteor Lifeliner, just like Praxel's. Now, the first thing I did is I called Tony in, and to his surprise, he did not know of this car. Um, you see, Tony was probably one of the most well-informed and quintessential experts on these types of vehicles. Um, he was a long-time, and I mean long-time, board member and president of the Professional Car Society. And he always told me, Dave, um, you know, when I told him about it, he says, this is the one and you will own it. He says, I can feel it. I'll do whatever it takes to get you to have this car. Now, if you haven't heard of the Professional Car Society, uh, I'm just going to kind of segue uh, into this. Um, I really would invite you to look them up and join. Um, it is, it, it's a wonderful organization, and the information you can glean from them is absolutely priceless. It has been for me. Um, it's just a great group of people who have provided uh, me and others with invaluable information. I mean, they are historians, parts finders, mechanical wizards, and just plain passionate about these vehicles. So I, I, I ask that you please visit their website. And if you're not a member, sign up. You will absolutely not be disappointed. I mean, they have a quarterly uh, magazine that comes out. Just high resolution photos, great stories about these great classic cars. Um, you will be waiting for the next edition to come out, um, just like I do, you know, every quarter. So let's kind of uh, segue back and get on track here again. So um, last November, um, I received the very sad news that Tony had tragically passed away. It was it, it was absolutely a devastating blow to lose such a wonderful friend. If you knew Tony, um, you you would just see he was just such a peaceful and just a pleasure to be with. And you know I think about him often and his family, his wife Kim, and and the void all of us have for not having you know, Tony with us. It was just an extremely sad day for me. Well, a couple hours um, after I received the news of Tony's passing, um, I got a call from one of the uh, board members that owned the car in Colorado, and they told me that the ambulance was mine. Um, there was a very long pause, and they were like, Dave, are you there? And I kind of told them what happened to Tony. And um, you, you could hear the pause on their end. And, and they were so elated that the car was going to go to a person that had, that had a personal connection somehow with it. And, and I said that I knew Tony had a part in it. And for me today, this car is so special uh, to me. So here's some uh, additional photos um, I received from the car before it was sent to me. And from what I can see, it was in really in very good to excellent condition. Um, you know, my goal was to restore the car back to its original look, which meant those graphics and custom wheels had to go right off on the bat. 
um, as well as the federal aerodynamic um, light bar um, had to be replaced as it was not uh, period correct. And I did have a uh, actually a federal twin sonic in my possession that I was going to replace it with, which was period correct. Um, I did ask the caretakers if they could store it for the winter, um, as I really didn't want to risk it being transported to Minnesota in the winter road conditions, and I, I really didn't want to subject it to any kind of roadway ice melting chemicals. Um, they understood and, and, and agreed, graciously agreed, um, and this spring um, I finally contacted a transporter, and it made its way from Lyman, Colorado to my home in Minnesota. So you can see the vehicle on the transporter when it arrived at my house. So here's some additional photos, um, you know, after it arrived um, in my driveway and um, a few after I began the process of detailing it. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, um, you know, in the next uh, few uh, episodes, um, I definitely will focus on uh, what I've done to it so far and uh, what I really need to do to get it right where I want it to be. It, it's, it's very close, but there's a few more things that I really want to do to it to kind of get it to where I feel comfortable um, having it. So I'm looking forward to uh, posting those soon. And, um, you know, I really want to thank you for taking the time to watch and to please, I'm asking you, please like and subscribe to this channel. Um, and remember um, to reach out to me if you too would like to post your stories. Um, here is an email um, address that you can send them to and uh, be more than happy to, uh, to uh, post them. And if you want me to do some editing, I, I certainly will. But uh, like I said, um, I think bloopers uh, <laughs> add a lot of uh, fun uh, to these videos. And I know that we will certainly enjoy them. So until next time, cheers and have a great day.